Welcome to Hong Kong Brief. The content of the briefing includes Airlines halt flights in and out of Israel after a massive attack by Hamas ignites heavy fighting. U.S. probe of Russia sanctions busting focuses on major oil trader. Advisors to Evergrande creditors warn of potential liquidation. Shenzhen unveils 20-point plan to boost funding for local tech companies. Indonesia's Prabowo to ensure continuity if he becomes president, brother says. Airlines halt flights in and out of Israel after a massive attack by Hamas ignites heavy fighting. Associated Press Many airlines have suspended flights to and from Israel after Hamas attacked the country. Israel declared war after Hamas launched a massive attack on the nation, in which over 1,000 targets were hit in Gaza. In response, Palestinian militants continued to fire rockets into Israeli territory, causing air raid sirens to go off in Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. The U.S. State Department has issued travel advisories for the region due to potential terrorism and civil unrest. American Airlines, United Airlines, and Delta Airlines have all suspended service to Israel, and other airlines in Europe and Asia have done the same. U.S. probe of Russia sanctions busting focuses on major oil trader. Wall Street Journal the U.S. Justice Department is investigating whether Murtaza Lakhani, CEO of oil trading and shipping company Mercantile and Maritime Group, traded Russian oil in violation of Western sanctions. The probe is part of a broader effort by the U.S. to crack down on violations of sanctions imposed on Russia's energy exports. Lakhani is known in the oil world for operating in complicated places and has facilitated trades of oil produced in Iraq, Iraqi Kurdistan and Venezuela. Lakhani had long done business with Rosneft, the Russian state-backed energy giant, both inside and outside Russia. The Justice Department is also examining whether Lakhani has a business relationship with Rosneft chief executive Igor Sekin, an ally of President Vladimir Putin. Traders say that operating in Russian oil markets is allowed, but there are reputational dangers from being seen to finance Putin's war. Advisors to Evergrande creditors warn of potential liquidation. Financial Times Advisors to international bondholders of Evergrande, the Chinese property developer that defaulted on its debts in 2021, have raised concerns about the potential liquidation of the company. They criticized Evergrande's botched efforts to obtain PRC regulatory approval and said that the failure to implement the restructuring plan would have a catastrophic effect on other Chinese companies and their ability to raise capital from the international market. Evergrande revealed last month that it could not proceed with the restructuring plan due to domestic regulators and an unspecified investigation into the company. The bondholder group warned that the company's liquidation could lead to its uncontrolled collapse. Shenzhen unveils 20-point plan to boost funding for local tech companies. South China Morning Post The municipal government of Shenzhen, known as China Silicon Valley, has unveiled a new initiative to support local technology companies with funding. The plan includes forging closer ties with Hong Kong and developing an innovative capital center in Shenzhen. The move comes as U.S. venture capital and private equity stakes in Chinese firms face targeted restrictions. Indonesia's Prabowo to ensure continuity if he becomes president, brother says. South China Morning Post Prabowo Subianto's brother, Hashim Jojo Hadakusumo, has said that continuity in politics will be a cornerstone of Prabowo's presidency if he is elected as president of Indonesia. Hashim emphasized the importance of neutrality and non-alignment in geopolitics, stating that Indonesia will continue to be friends with China, Australia, the United States, India, Japan, and other countries. He also highlighted the importance of Chinese business and investments to the Indonesian economy and expressed his brother's commitment to welcoming business from mainland China. Prabowo plans to implement programs to address inequality and climate change, including free meals for schoolchildren and expectant mothers, supplemental salaries for underpaid workers, a rural housing development scheme, and a massive reforestation program. Hong Kong insurers to face record high claims after spike in catastrophes. South China Morning Post 
Insurance claims in Hong Kong are predicted to reach a record high this year, according to analysts. Hong Kong has experienced three typhoons and two black rainstorms over the past two months. The city saw Typhoon Koinu on Monday, which saw reports of fallen trees, landslides, and flooding cases. Insurance claims for cars, property damage and business interruptions are expected to increase due to the recent natural disasters. The record for insurance claims payout is 3.1 billion Hong Kong dollars, $395 million, paid in 2018 for damages caused by Typhoon Mankut, according to the Hong Kong Federations of Insurers. Malaysia sees a lot of opportunity for more investment from China. South China Morning Post Malaysia's Deputy Minister of Investment, Trade and Industry, Liu Chin Tong, stated that Malaysia sees a lot of opportunity for continued investments from China, despite the economic slowdown in the country. Liu views China as a two-speed economy, with non-real estate sectors experiencing healthy growth while real estate and associated sectors undergo difficult adjustments. He believes that Chinese investors will view Malaysia as a viable production site due to its proximity to the supply chain for Western markets. Liu also emphasized the need for Malaysia to create opportunities at home to prevent talent outflows to neighboring Singapore. Iran concern grips emerging markets as Israel heads to war. Bloomberg The possibility of conflict with Iran has become a top concern for emerging market investors following another conflict between Israel and Hamas. The outbreak of war in the Middle East has temporarily replaced Federal Reserve policy and China's growth as the most immediate concern. One fear is that the U.S. could take a more active role in the conflict after it sent an aircraft carrier strike group to the eastern Mediterranean and a Wall Street Journal article said Iran was actively involved in planning the attack. Can Hong Kong maintain Asian Games success? That is the 7 billion Hong Kong dollars question. South China Morning Post Hong Kong's athletes have performed well at the Asian Games, achieving a record 53 medals, including eight golds. However, there are concerns about the effectiveness of the Sports Institute, which has received 7.4 billion Hong Kong dollars, $945 million, in government funding over the past decade. The gymnastics, athletics, and badminton teams in particular have been criticized for their poor performance. Despite this, Kenneth Fock Kai Kong, the chef de mission for the Asian Games, praised Hong Kong's wealth of talent and called for further development of sports in the city. Evacuations ordered as remnants of Typhoon Koinu hit southern China. The Toronto Star The remnants of Typhoon Koinu have hit southern China after causing one death and over 300 injuries in Taiwan. People have been moved to shelters and nearly 2,000 boats recalled to port. The storm is weakening as it moves along the coast of China's Guangdong province. Air and rail services have been suspended, and ferry services connecting Hainan with mainland China have also been suspended. This comes a month after southern China and Hong Kong were hit by Typhoon Seola, and as Hainan is still recovering from the impact of COVID-19 on its tourism industry. Evergrande EV unit resumes trading, share sale faces uncertainties. Nikkei Asia. Shares in China Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Group, the electric vehicle, EV, unit of property developer China Evergrande Group, have resumed trading in Hong Kong. The stock opened 5% lower than the previous close, with price movements ranging between plus or minus 9%. The EV unit's shares had been suspended since September 28 while parent company China Evergrande and subsidiary Evergrande Property Services resumed trading last week. China Evergrande has been under financial stress due to debt and slumping sales. Live markets oil prices surge after Hamas attack on Israel, latest updates. Telegraph. Oil prices have surged following the outbreak of military conflict in the Middle East between Israel and Hamas. Brent crude, the international benchmark, has increased by over 3.6 percent, or more than $3 a barrel. Although Israel is not an oil-producing nation, the conflict threatens to disrupt supplies. Major oil producer Iran has denied involvement in the attack on Israel, 
following reports that Iranian security forces were involved in planning the attack. The surge in oil prices could have far-reaching implications for energy markets, global supply chains, and geopolitical dynamics. Stock market today, oil gains while share prices fall after Israel strikes back at Hamas attack. Associated Press Crude oil prices surged on Monday as the Israeli government declared war following deadly attacks by Hamas from the Gaza Strip. The conflict in the Middle East often pushes oil prices higher due to the risk of disruptions to supplies. Tel Aviv's main stock benchmark was down 0.4% and Israel's central bank said it would sell up to $30 billion in foreign exchange to prop up the shekel, which fell to a near eight-year low. The price of gold was up 1.1% early Monday at $1,865 per ounce. Typhoon Koinu brings floods to Hong Kong. Deutsche Welle. Hong Kong has issued its highest level of weather alert for only the second time in history. The black rainstorm warning was issued for six hours on Monday as Typhoon Koinu brought torrential rain to the region. Parts of Hong Kong experienced over 150 mm of rainfall, with some areas on Hong Kong Island receiving over 300 mm. The typhoon has caused disruption, with schools, the stock exchange, and Hong Kong's international airport all closing. No major damage has been reported. Evergrande offshore bondholders surprised by debt restructuring regulatory hurdles. Reuters China Evergrande Group's offshore bondholder group expressed surprise at the property developer's announcement that its offshore debt restructuring plan did not meet regulatory requirements. The group stated that it had not received any documents or filings from Evergrande despite multiple requests. Evergrande had previously revealed that Chinese regulators had barred it from issuing new debt due to an investigation into its main unit, which disrupted its offshore debt restructuring plans. The bondholder group urged Evergrande to seek a resolution from regulators to allow the restructuring to proceed, warning that the base case is that the company will be liquidated at the next winding up hearing on October 30, 2023. A Hong Kong court is scheduled to hear a winding up petition against Evergrande on that day. Ladies and gentlemen, Six Doctor here, your favorite observer from the Six Degrees world. Today, we have quite a mix of news stories from around the globe. Let's dive in. First up, we have airlines suspending flights to and from Israel due to the recent attack by Hamas. It seems like everyone wants to avoid the conflict, even airlines. But hey, can you blame them? Nobody wants to be caught in the middle of a war zone while serving peanuts and drinks. It's a wise decision, but let's hope peace is restored soon so that we can all get back to our vacation plans. Next, we have the U.S. Justice Department investigating possible sanctions violations by a major oil trader. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it amusing that a guy named Lakani, who operates in complicated places, is being investigated for trading Russian oil. It's like a James Bond movie plot, but with less action and more paperwork. I guess even in the world of oil trading, you can't escape the long arm of the law. Moving on, advisors to Evergrande creditors are warning of potential liquidation. Now, I know what you're thinking, Evergrande? Again? Yes, my friends, it seems like Evergrande just can't catch a break. This time, their botched efforts to obtain regulatory approval may lead to their uncontrolled collapse. I can't help but wonder if they need a lesson in crisis management. Maybe they should hire a team of superheroes to save the day. I hear Spider-Man is good at dealing with sticky situations. In other news, the municipal government of Shenzhen has unveiled a plan to boost funding for local tech companies. Ah, Shenzhen, the Silicon Valley of China. They are smart to forge closer ties with Hong Kong and develop an innovative capital center. After all, money makes the world go round, and in the world of technology, it's all about the Benjamins, or should I say, the Yuans? Anyway, let's hope this plan gives a much-needed boost to the tech industry in the region. Now, let's talk politics. Prabowo Subianto's brother in Indonesia says there will be continuity if Prabowo becomes president. Well, that's comforting to know. I'm glad they won't be changing the channel, so to speak. 
It's always nice when politicians promise to keep things rolling smoothly. But hey, let's hope they also have some new and exciting programs up their sleeves. I mean, who doesn't love a good surprise? Moving on to Hong Kong, insurers are facing record high claims after a spike in catastrophes. It seems like Mother Nature has a bone to pick with Hong Kong lately. With three typhoons and two black rainstorms in just two months, it's no wonder insurance claims are through the roof. I can only imagine the chaos in the claims department, I bet they're working overtime and drowning in paperwork. Hang in there, guys, and remember to keep your umbrellas handy. Now, let's talk about Malaysia and its two-speed economy. Apparently, Chinese investors see Malaysia as a viable production site due to its proximity to Western markets. I guess it's all about location, location, location. And hey, who can resist the allure of Malaysian cuisine? I mean, who wouldn't want to invest in a country that can whip up a mean plate of Nasi Lemak? Moving on to Iran, the possibility of conflict with the US is causing concern for emerging market investors. It seems like the Middle East is always a hotbed of tension and drama. I can't help but think that maybe they should consider hiring a therapist instead of sending aircraft carriers. Just a thought. Now, let's talk sports. Hong Kong's athletes have performed well at the Asian Games, but there are concerns about the effectiveness of the Sports Institute. It seems like some teams have been criticized for their poor performance, I guess they didn't bring home the gold. But hey, nobody's perfect, right? Let's hope they can bounce back and make Hong Kong proud in future competitions. Lastly, we have the remnants of Typhoon Koinu hitting southern China. It seems like Mother Nature just can't get enough of Asia. After wreaking havoc in Taiwan, the typhoon is now causing evacuations and disruptions in southern China. I guess the phrase, when it rains, it pours is quite literal in this case. Stay safe, everyone, and don't forget your raincoats. Well, that's all the news for today, folks. It's been a wild ride, as always, but I hope you enjoyed my take on these stories. Now it's your turn, what do you think about these news stories? Do you have any thoughts or questions? Let's hear it. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.